give it my best. So. Um, good afternoon. Um, I think everybody knows me in here, but for those that may not know me, I am Mark's son, Ben. Looking. Looking out at this crowd, I know my dad would be humbled by how many people are here today. So let me get it out, be fine. <laughs> thank you, thank you everyone for supporting our family today. Most of all, I wanna thank my wife, Courtney, who's been so patient with me this week. Um, I've been away from home with work and, and planning this today's celebration, so thank you, Courtney. Dad was so proud to have you as a daughter-in-law. The truth is, I feel very lucky today. I'm here with all of my family, Dad's family, friends, to celebrate a, gay, a great man who gave me and everyone in his life everything he had until the very end. It's nearly impossible to define Dad in just a few words. He was a rare blend of father, grandfather, bowler, baseball coach, basketball coach, western movie bonanza lover, flower gardener, and will of fortune savant, and diehard Chicago White Sox fan. And dad was always unbeatable to me. So this is a day that was not to, supposed to come so soon. That makes it even harder to try and sum up dad's life, heart, and spirit in, in so few words. A few words for me, you guys may think it's a lot of words, but. My earliest childhood memories of dad revolve around him working. He was always working. I'd wake up every morning long before, I'd wake up every morning long before sunrise to the deafening roar of him war warming up his navy blue rusted out 1980s Chevy Citation with a missing muffler. <laughs> then at 4 a.m. he'd be off to his full-time job as a printing press operator. When he came home from work in the afternoon, I'd watch him eat, eat either two bologna sandwiches or two hot dog sandwiches. He'd take a nap, then he'd wake up and he'd go to his second job at the bowling alley until 11 p.m before coming home, going to bed, and doing, doing it all over again day after day. Dad's highest priority in life was always providing for me, my sister Casey, and his grandson Michael. Dad's approach to the world was very straightforward. He'd simply figure out what needed to be done, he'd put his head down and he'd do it. No drama, no self-pity, no dancing, no complaint. I sometimes think, at, looking back now, I sometimes think it would have been easy for him to leave us, leave me, my mom, and my sister, but then I realized that the love he had for us was worth all the hard work along the way. When he wasn't at one of his two jobs, I had to. Oh, okay. When he wasn't at one of his two jobs, I had to endure, endure, endure his blistering snore while he slept in the living room. Me and Casey would be watching TV. Dad would be sleeping, and he'd be snoring so loud. And for the record, the only person that I know who snores painfully louder than my dad is my other dad, my father-in-law, and my stepdad, Mark, and Tracy. Wait, you guys, you guys, I never thought like anybody would be dad and snoring, and, and you guys do, so thank you. Um, you will never meet a man who, fa who more faithfully lived his values than dad and no value defines his life more than simplicity. I don't mean simple-minded, I mean uncomplicated, honest, completely free of drama and unapologetic. 
He was a rare mix, especially in today's world. Dad was a very traditional father who viewed himself as the rock, whose only purpose was to provide for his wife and kids. He almost never had time to play with us. He worked tirelessly to ensure our family's basic needs were met, and he expected help from nobody. When I was a kid, Dad, Dad seemed so mysterious to me. He was emotionally strong, he was very stubborn, and he was a quiet man of few words. He seemed unbreakable, never willing to show me his vulnerable side. There was comfort and security in his simplicity and his consistency. I always knew what to expect and I always knew who he was. Looking back and reflecting, I think his strength of character was shaped as he grew up in Michiana, where his dad, Harlow Grice, worked long hours as captain of the county police department, and whose mom, Marilyn Woman, she worked hard to help a lot of people in need, and he had his sister, Ann Eileen, his big sister, Ann Eileen, to look up to. Mark's sister, Eileen, sent me a few memories of dad the other day in which she shared the following. I called him Marky Mark as a term of endearment, and he called me the big dummy. <laughs> I liked when he called me the big dummy because I knew he was happy. Mark hated to be alone, but he was a solitary little boy because there was no one around for him to play with until he was a teenager. Dad carried that independence throughout his life. He didn't wear his emotions on his sleeve. He was tough and he was stoic. Like many fathers of my dad's generation, he never apologized to his son for anything. He had no regrets. And also, love and affection didn't come easy for my dad. He expressed his love and affection through actions, not words. But there was never a day that I didn't feel dad's love. Unfortunately, he worked so much and was always so tired that he didn't have much time to play with us. I remember the few times he did have time to play. He would lock me between his legs and tickle me until I couldn't breathe anymore. There was nothing I loved, there's, there was nothing I loved more and no better memories of dad than those moments. Dad was disciplined with his work and instilled that same drive and discipline in me. He demanded excellence, especially when it came to my behavior and my education. Growing up, we lived mostly paycheck to paycheck in a neighborhood where most of my friends dropped out of school. Dad focused my mind on education, staying out of trouble, and working hard. He made me believe that I could achieve anything I wanted in life despite all the negative influences around me. He was always supporting, he always supported me in everything that I did. He rarely, if ever, criticized me. When I told him I wanted to play poker in college, he bought me poker books to help me get better. Most fathers would have just told me how crazy I was to be playing poker. When I was the worst hitter on the Little League team that my dad man managed, he never expressed any fr frustration towards me. When I told him my wife and I were going to start our life two hours away from him in Indianapolis, he never tried to convince me to live closer to him and help him. He was always 100% supportive of everything I did, and he never tried to impose his own thoughts, wants, and desires on me. That unconditional support made all the difference in my life. As stoic as dad could be, he had a softer side that showed up in his love of flowers and cookies. His yard was always filled with beautiful flowers, and he especially loved especially loved his rose bushes out front. My wife likes to joke with me about sharing my dad's unmanly and more gentle love of flowers. In a social setting, dad didn't like being the center of attention. So something like this, I only think it could have happened with 
you know, dad gone because I don't know if he could have handled all this attention here today. If there was ever an awkward silence with dad, my wife Courtney and I always knew we could bring up cooking or food to get dad talking. It might surprise some here to learn that dad's other go-to subject was grocery shopping. He was an expert grocery shopper and was always trying to give me lessons on how to get the best deals. I'll pass along one of his secrets that I learned at the young age of 10 when grocery shopping. Never look at the total price of a grocery item that you need a lot of. Be sure to instead focus on the unit price of the item and make your pick that way. Like you, I was concerned when I first heard about dad's cancer diagnosis last year. I began, I began searching for the right words to say to him. But as usual, dad was optimistic and unfazed by the diagnosis. He showed no fear. I think he wanted this to be as easy as possible for all of us. He didn't complain or feel sorry for himself. Dad had always seemed to disdain self-pity. In fact, dad did the opposite and went on living his life as if nothing had changed. Over the last year, Dad showed me the strength and courage he always had. He fought for us as long as he could. He didn't want to let us down, and he never did. I'm so lucky that at the age of three, he chose to become, he chose to become my father. I'm so proud to be his son. Dad was fighting hard to su survive until days before his death. He would not let go, even in the face of bad news from his doctors. I sat next to him days before his death, and I held his hand while, while he laid in bed. I sat there silent for several minutes, fighting hard to work up the courage to ask him the question I wanted to ask, and share with him what I needed to share with him before he passed. It was hard for me to say the words to him I needed to say because at this point, I felt Dad had, yet, had not yet acknowledged his likely fate. It was hard to know what he was feeling, and I was worried that having this conversation with him could take some of the hope he had of living away from him. But after getting the strength at that moment, holding his hand, I looked him straight in the eye and I asked him one question. Are you worried about anything, Dad? He struggled to speak, and the words came out slowly in a whisper. He said, I just want everything to be taken care of. I assured Dad that everything and everyone would be taken care of, and that he didn't have to worry about his children and his grandchildren he worked so tirelessly to provide for as a father during his lifetime. And most important, I told him that when the day came, this day, that I would make sure every one of his family and friends knew that it is only through his love, his selflessness, and his hard work that I'm able to stand here today as a proud husband, father, son, and brother delivering this tribute to dad. Dad took up a lot of space in our lives, and his loss leaves a big hole. What remains is his wonderful legacy in many of us, and we will carry his love and spirit in our hearts forever. He will never be forgotten. Looking back on Dad's life, one of the things that jumps out at me most are the recent trips that we took around the 4th of July to Saugatuck, Michigan. We made this trip every single year for the past six years. We'd swim at the beach, we'd make s'mores, we'd light sparklers and fireworks, we'd play euchre, and we'd simply relax. Dad loved nothing more than watching his children, grandchildren, nieces, and nephews watch fireworks and make s'mores. Just days before Dad passed, with his head down and his body slouched, 
I told him that I would take his video camera home with me. After hearing this, Dad suddenly, his head suddenly raised, his body straightened, and his eyes lit up with joy and pride, almost like a sort of relief. I found the videos he recorded of some of us on vacation in Sagata. While reviewing the videos, it struck me that Sagatuck was the place where Dad was happiest. What I'd like to do now is share a few of those Sagatuck vacation scenes filmed through Dad's eyes and filmed through Dad's voice as a final tribute to my father. Please cut the lights. Thank you, Dad, for everything. I will miss you, and we will meet again.